Applying jobs is one of the most exhausting and time-consuming tasks for job seekers. The process is long and mundane, and involves repetitive actions, such as filling out the same information over and over again. To make job application process a bit less painful, I decided to create a Python script to automate job applications. In this video, I will show you how we can automate job applications using Python. I know there are many paid services out there that automate job submission for you, but they are either very expensive or are not reliable. By using Python, we can control every single step in the process. This is a beginner-friendly tutorial. The only prerequisite is you have some Python experience. And for the exercise, I will use one of the job applications on Lever's website, which is a very popular job platform companies use to post their job opening. To automate the job submission, I will be using a Python library called Playwright. Playwright is an open source automation framework for web testing and browser automation. It supports multiple browsers like Chrome, Firefox, and WebKit. To install Playwright on your terminal, run the command pip install playwright. Once we installed playwright, we need to download the drivers by run the command playwright install. This will install driver for Firefox, Chrome, and WebKit. If you only want to install a specific driver like Firefox, then you will run the command playwright install Firefox. Now, launch your code editor and create a Python file called main.py. To automate the application submission, we first need to figure out the steps required to submit a job application. Here, let me duplicate the job posting tab. When we automate the process, the first thing we want to do is click the apply for this job button. Then in the job application form, we want to attach a resume and fill out all the necessary fields and questionnaires. In the last step, we want to interrupt the script execution for us to manually submit the application and press enter to terminate the program. Let me give you a demo first before we dive into the script development. When I run the script, Playwright will launch a browser. Navigate to the job posting page. Attach a resume. Fill out the personal information and answer the questionnaires. Just imagine, if you're applying 20 jobs a day, how much time the script will save you. Now in the script, import OS, time, sync playwright, and timeout error. Create the main function to serve as the entry point. In the function, create two constant variables for the job application URL and resume file path. If resume file is not found, print a message, resume file not found, and exit the function. Once we verify the resume file exists, um, we can proceed to the job application submission. Insert a try except finally block to handle exceptions and playwright object termination. In the try block, initialize playwright and launch a non headless Chrome browser session. By setting headless to false, the browser window will be visible when playwright is performing the application submission. From the browser object, create a new tab and use the go to function to navigate to the job posting page. Now what I want to do is, I want to figure out the HTML elements associated to the widgets I want to control using Playwright. I am going to hover my mouse to the apply for this job button, right click, and click inspect. This will launch the browser's developer tools window and highlight the HTML element associated with the apply button. Instead of using all the attributes to locate an element, here, we can use XPath Query. XPath Query is the language you use to locate an element. 
and to locate the button element in the search field, I will paste the expat query expression and press enter. From the search result, only one element is found based on the query expression, which is the apply button. And by using the same approach, I can locate all the fields to fill out the job application detail using Playwright, which I will show you in a second. Back to the Python script. To create a reference to the apply button from the page object, we can use the query selector method and provide the expat expression. If query selector didn't find anything, it will return nothing. In that case, we will raise an exception with a message button not found. Otherwise, we will instruct Playwright to click the button. After clicking the apply button, we need to ensure the job application page is fully loaded before proceeding. To accomplish this, we can utilize the wait for selector method from the page object. We'll insert an XPath query to detect when the specific element appears on the page, indicating that the application has loaded, and we'll wait up to 10 seconds. On the application page, we will attach the resume file using page.setInputFiles method, providing the XPath query to locate the attach resume button and resume file path. To fill out the job application, I will create three functions to fill out each section. The fill form function will autofill the personal detail like an applicant's name, email, phone number, LinkedIn URL, etc. And to type something in an input field, you want to use the fill method. To answer the custom questions, create a function called Build custom questions. Because we don't know the number of questions we are going to get, and some questions are radio buttons, some questions are text fields, what I would recommend is go on different job postings and collect the questions into a database so you can truly automate the job application process. Now, in the job questionnaires section, I'll store the questions in a list called list items using the query selector all method. Then I'll iterate through each question, check its input type, and answer each question accordingly. For instance, if a question type is a radio button, I'll first retrieve all possible answers. Next, I'll check for keywords in the question description. Then I'll iterate through each answer option, checking if the keyword is found. If so, I'll select that radio button. And for text area input type, I will use the same approach as well, except I will use the fill method instead. For the equal employment and demographic survey question sessions, I will create a function called fill equal employment questions and another function called fill demographic survey. In the fill equal employment questions function, since the question type is a drop down, we need to use query selector to create a reference to the drop down element. Then we'll use the select option method to choose the drop down value. When using the select option method, you can specify whether you want to use a drop down value or drop down index to select the item. And in the field demographic survey function, again, we will use query select all method to store all the demographic questions into a list called demographic questions. Iterate each question, check the keyword in each question, and answer the questions accordingly. Now, in the main function, insert the field form, field custom questions fill equal employment questions, and fill demographic survey functions to auto-fill the job application. This is probably the most important step in this tutorial. 
This is just a personal preference. I prefer to review the job application and manually click the submit button to submit a job application, ensuring I've answered each question correctly. To pause Playwright's execution, I can insert an input function. This pauses the code execution, allowing me to do everything I need on the website. Then I can press enter in the terminal to resume running the rest of the code. In the entry point, call the main function. And that's all the code we need to write to automate a job application submission. About 153 lines of code, which is not bad at all in my opinion. Now, save the file and run the script and let's see what happens. Going through each question in field, we can see that everything is filled and answered correctly. The input function pauses the code execution, allowing me to scroll the page and click Submit Application to submit my job application. In the terminal, I can press Enter to run the rest of the code to terminate the session. And that covers everything in this how to automate job applications using Python tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and find the video useful. The source code is in the description. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more tutorial like this. Happy coding. See you in the next one.